Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. It's Friday. Congratulations. I hope you've had a great week. If you can right now, let's just prepare ourselves for this weekend. Lord willing, you will be in a local Bible preaching church and you're going to go there for worship. Well, we're in the book of Leviticus studying worship. Right now, reach over, get your Bible, and come with me to Leviticus chapter 3. Leviticus 3, and we're doing our study chapter by chapter through the book of Leviticus. We've got a great potluck dinner for you today. Believe it or not, they're going to come to a potluck dinner you'll see here in just a moment. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. This one's entitled Coupon Faith? Question mark. I love gospel tracts that start where the reader is, what they know, and goes to the unknown. Everybody knows about coupons and what they can do. But so few people understand what it is to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, they'll put their faith in a coupon, but I'll say more about that here in just a moment. I mentioned the word potluck here a moment ago. Everybody knows what a potluck supper is. And normally you hear that word either at church or a workplace. A potluck supper is where everybody comes, they bring a dish to pass, and then people eat Together, it's a meal shared among people with a common connecting point. Obviously, at work, the connecting point is that everybody is working for the same company and they share the desire, hopefully, for the company to thrive. When we come to a church potluck dinner, the connecting point is Jesus. At least he ought to be. And so right now, I'm only going to be speaking to Bible preaching churches that have potluck, where in those churches, personal salvation through Christ is the overriding theme of the worship services. A church potluck meal, uh, these meals are not really, I think, I hope you know this, they're not really about you and I getting our tummies full. They're about fellowship. They're about a shared relationship with Christ. And since God has accepted us through Jesus Christ by grace, we at the potluck accept one another the same way. We are in a grace-based relationship. Now, let me show you a Jewish potluck potluck dinner, but it's on a smaller scale and is found here in Leviticus chapter 3. Before I begin to read at verse 1 there, I mentioned that gospel tract here, Coupon Faith. Friend, do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have uh, over 40 gospel tracts. They're in a sample packet. I would love to send you a sample packet. It's absolutely free. For 80 years, we have been publishing gospel tracts in different languages and giving them away free of charge around the world. We're able to do that because so many people use us as one of their missionaries. Either a family does, an individual does, a local church does. That's the way we're able to do that and give tracts to so many gospel workers all over the world. This particular track, Coupon Faith, is one that we wrote based upon being in a grocery store behind a lady who got over $70 worth of groceries for less than 20 because she used all kinds of coupons. And upon my asking her some questions, playing like the dumb man role, I was asking her this. She had no idea about the company and its financial Uh, strength, the company behind these coupons. All she knew was if she handed the coupons to the clerk, she got a good deal. Well, friend, she was putting her faith in coupons. People understand that. Here is a good, clear presentation of the gospel, starting with coupon faith going to faith in Christ. 
please let me send this to you. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Listen, have pen and paper ready. But you can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.com. O-R-G. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Leviticus chapter 3, here's the way the chapter starts. And if his oblation, that is his offering, be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And he shall offer the sacrifice of peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat that covers the inwards and all the fat that's on the inwards, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flank, that is the loin part of the animal, and the caul or the fatty lobe above the liver, with the kidneys he shall take it away. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto God. Now, in all there's 17 verses, but let me stop right there for the moment. Remember now, Leviticus is a book on worship. Even more precisely, the opening seven chapters are about coming to God or approaching God, and the sacrifices given in these seven chapters were given by God through Moses to the people, and these sacrifices were about being in fellowship with God, and they're given to people who already belong to God. Oh, we're going to certainly see pictures of salvation in chapters 1 through 7, but the point is, how can I, who already am a child of God, even though I struggle and stumble with sin issues, how can I have an ongoing fellowship with a holy God in light of the fact that I still commit sin? I'm going to use three words, all beginning with the letter F right now, to help us think through what we find here in Leviticus 3. The three words are this, fact, feast, and foundation. Are you ready? If you have pen there, jot them down. Number one, fact. The fact is this, peace with God is possible. Peace with God is possible. That's what this whole chapter is about. The Old Testament saint could know that they were at peace with God. My my friend, if the Old Testament saints could know this and all they had were animal sacrifices, then we in the New Testament era can surely know this. We can have peace with Christ, the once and forever sacrifice. Amen? There's a fact. We can have peace with God. Second word, feast. There was a feast that followed this offering, and actually the feast was really part of the whole ceremony of the offering. Three parties, three people, three groups shared this feast, this potluck dinner. First of all, God participated. He shared this meal through the parts of the offering that were burned on the fire. If you look at verse 16 of chapter 3, it says there that that part was called food. And since nobody else there ate it, it was food for God. God is pictured in picture form here eating this food. Then secondly, the worshiper, and thirdly, the priest and his family ate the leftover parts of this, of this offering. They ate them together. They shared a fellowship or a peace feast. Now, in that era, when people ate a meal together, especially a ceremonial meal, they were committing themselves to each other in a bond of loyalty. Even to this day in the Middle East, if you go in and you're offered a meal there and you eat and you break bread together, that's a significant relationship happening there. A loyalty is being shared, not just from the one who is providing the feast, but you who enjoy the feast. You're giving them your loyalty. The third word is the word foundation. The foundation or the basis of this fellowship meal was blood. 
Only blood can deal with sin. The offerer would bring a sacrifice to the priest. He would put his hand upon it, identifying with it. Then this, he would kill the animal, and the blood was sprinkled by the priest, verse 2 says, on the sides of the altar. Now, if you're listening and you want to enter the presence of a holy God, and you're unholy, and you and I understand that I'm unholy, if you and I want to enter the presence of a holy God even just to pray, we must come on the basis, on the fact of the shedding of blood. If you have not received Jesus' shed blood as your sin payment, then you cannot enter into the holy presence of God. Can you pray and God hear you? Yes, God knows everything. But God is not obliged to answer your prayer because you don't belong to him. You've not shared the sin-cleansing blood of Calvary. Let me quickly show you how Jesus is seen, how he's pictured in this peace offering. If you still have your note-taking paper there, please get it back out and jot down four words, all beginning with the letter P, like in the word potluck. Ready? Number one, person. Person. Our peace in this day and age, our peace is the person of Jesus Christ. Jot it down, Ephesians 2.14. It says about Jesus, he is our peace. He is our peace. Our good works can't make peace with God. Our peace with God is made through a person. He is the picture of that veil through which you get to the holy of holies. We get to God's presence through the person of Jesus. Second word, price. Price, the price of our peace was the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.27, jot that reference down. Colossians 1.27, again, speaking of Jesus saying, he having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. How do we get peace? We are reconciled to God. The barriers are broken down because of the blood of the cross. Third word is the word process. The process of our peace is described in Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified, being declared guilty, uh, being declared not guilty, being declared innocent, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The process, friend, is a legal one. That word justified is a legal term. We must be declared innocent, and you and I cannot declare ourselves innocent. Our local church pastor, the Pope can't. Only God Almighty can, and he says, you want peace? You want to be declared innocent? The process is justification through the blood of Christ. My fourth word is the word preach. Our task once we have peace with God is to tell it to others. Acts 10, 36 says, The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. He's Lord for all the nations. My friend, you are either a person whose job it is to preach peace to others, and by the way, we have tracks to help you do that, or you're a person who needs peace with God, and guess what? We have tracks that can help you with that. They explain the good news of peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Please get the tracks from us. Receive Christ today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.